In Berlin in 1987, President Ronald Reagan, with his famous line to Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down this wall, wasn't the only one making history. In this very room, 17 lady Spartans, as they were known then, with three dedicated coaches, made school history as they became the first basketball team, girls or boys, to bring home a state championship. Thanks to their success, Immaculata Girls Basketball became a force in county and state circles. Led by coach Tom Morio, with his assistants Linda Bertel and Liz Amatucci Gleason, these lady Spartans had an outstanding record of 24 and four. Leading up to the final game, the Lady Spartans beat Montclair Immaculate by a score of 58 to 51 to be named NJSIAA North Jersey Parochial B Champs. Next up was the big match in which the two best parochial schools in the state vied for the top spot. The Lady Spartans beat Bishop Eustis by a score of 54 to 50. Not only was it thrilling to win the championship, but it was momentous that the group was the first basketball team to bring home the state trophy to Immaculata. In addition to the state championship accomplishment, the 1987 Lady Spartans were Mountain Valley Conference co-champions and finalists in the Somerset County Tournament. In 1987, newspapers were more of a presence, and all teams and players anticipated rankings and designations. Immaculata was ranked number two all area by the Home News, number two all area by TKR Cable, and number three all area by the Courier News. Team players won a host of awards, which are listed in your commemorative program but we do not want to acknowledge Donna Graybeck, who was the NJSIA State Championship MVP, and Tracy Rabbit, who was the team MVP. Kerry Jo Sullivan, Patty Sanford, Hope Pelican, along with Donna and Tracy, were honored several times by the press. Coach Tom Morio had the distinction of being named the New York Daily News New Jersey Basketball Coach of the Year, as well as the Courier News All-Area Coach of the Year and the Star Ledger and Home News Somerset County Coach of the Year. It was a magical year for Immaculata and the 1987 Lady Spartans, and that is why they are the first team inducted into the Immaculata Hall of Fame. Two years ago, the team came back home to celebrate the 30-year anniversary of their team's monumental achievement. Seven of the women went on to play college sports in basketball, soccer, and golf. All are accomplished professionals in their fields and are busy tending to the families. Now, let us introduce the stars of the first ever state championship in Immaculata history, the 1987 Lady Spartans basketball team. Hope Pelican Boxing. Kathleen Hanks Voss. Julie Botcher. Betsy Riemann Buckley. Sylvia Imhauser Canzilla. Donna Grayback Caprioni. Mary Chicarone Coyle, Lisa DeAngelis, Heather Haramaho, Allison Wojens Kaczynski, Patty Sanford McDonald, Trissa McDonough, Judy Mastriano Medina, Carrie Jo Sullivan Morgan. Tracy Rabbit, Suzanne Siri, Kelly Connolly White, Head Coach Tom Morio, Assistant Coaches Linda Pertel and Elizabeth Amatucci Gleason. With all the girls, women, Please come up to this page and with Coach, Coach Tom. Okay, um, I had a 20-page speech, 
But Carrie Jo has an early flight, so we've cut it down to about 18 pages. But um, as we were singing the national anthem, I started thinking the last time that I stood with these young, again, I call them young ladies, but these ladies uh, for a national anthem was on March 15th, 1987. And it was just great to uh, be able to do it again. On behalf of the 1987 state championship team and the coaches, I'd like to congratulate all of the incredible athletes uh, and people who are honored tonight. And also we'd like to thank all of the um, Hall of Fame uh, selection committee for this wonderful honor to be the first team ever inducted into the Maculata Hall, Hall of Fame. Tonight I speak for the entire team and the coaching staff. The 1986-87 season was a magical journey that, that saw this team become the first basketball team to ever win a state, tournament, a state championship at Immaculata. I'm here to accept this honor as a tribute to 15 women who refused to lose on the biggest stage of New Jersey high school basketball that day. I say to each member of this team, thank you for your extraordinary contributions to the game of basketball and to our team. To share this occasion with you, with each of you, is a truly humbling experience. I recently saw a quote that I gave after the state tournament game saying, winning, this, uh, winning today is a feeling I can't put into words. Now, 32 years later, I hope and I will attempt to put it into some words tonight. During that 86, 87 year, there were a number of times this team would bend and bend and bend, but they never broke. They never took anything for granted. To play like champions, you need to believe, you need to have someone believe in you and to set your sights on something you've never done before. Everyone started to believe in this team and the team began to believe in themselves. This team had a calling that year and that calling was to come together as one and accomplish something like never before. They have set the, the bar high for all of our teams to follow. We finished the season that year with a record of 24 wins and four losses. Those four losses only came to two teams. Unfortunately, we lost to Somerville twice by two points. And we lost to Ridge twice. We did beat them once to be, share the uh, conference championship with them. We lost them by three in the regular season and in the finals of the county tournament, we lost to them by six. But that uh, loss was very important to us because uh, we learned from that as we moved into the state tournament. Each of our losses were battles as well as a number of our victories. These are the type of games to build character, games that make you want more each time you walk on the court. These ladies were game tough. That's why we went out and played anybody in the state of New Jersey who would want to play us. While that state championship was won in Monmouth County that day, it was the battles here in Somerset County and a number of other northern counties that prepared us for that fateful day, March 15th, 1987. These ladies were heroes. And anybody who was at Immaculata, any students, um, you probably don't remember why you got a free day, day off from school that week, okay? <laughs> but it's because of these young ladies winning the state championship that everybody got a free day off. As we began to play in the state uh, tournament, the team came together as great uh, teams do, focused on one goal only, a state championship. After beating Pope John in the quarterfinal round, it was on to playing Morris Catholic in the sectional semifinals. Morris Catholic, was the team that knocked us out the year before. So we really wanted this game. Um, and while beating Bishop Hustis in the finals won that championship, beating Morris Catholic in triple overtime was the key to our championship. Um, that game seemed like it would never end. It just kept going and going. And, but we were able to beat them 48-44 and uh, the girls really took off from there. As we got, Further and further in that game, we started to do what we do best, and that was playing outstanding pressure defense, knocking down some important foul shots, bending but not breaking, and we were able to come across with that win. And then it was on to the sectional finals, a place that we have been to for the four past years, and unfortunately, all those ended in defeat. 
But this team, this team wasn't about to let that happen again. The fifth time was a charm as we defeated Montclair Immaculate 59-51 and then on to the state championship game. After attending mass together as a team that Sunday morning, we boarded the bus for the trip to Brook, Brookdale Community College. I told the girls to enjoy what was about to happen because it's a once in a lifetime experience. As the game got going, we didn't shoot it too well in the first half, falling behind by one at halftime. But we came out in the third quarter with some full court pressure. We were able to get the ball inside to Donna Graybeck. We had some clutch foul shooting uh, in the final 30 seconds. And the 54-50 victory was sealed and the state championship trophy would begin the trip north on the Garden State Parkway. We were able then to go over to the uh, Sullivan household. Uh, we had a great party there, and uh, it was just great to celebrate with all these young ladies, old ladies now. Um, <laughs> through the years, I've concluded that I've been the luckiest person in the world, and the Lord has uh, truly blessed me allowing me to coach this outstanding group of players. The game of basketball has taught and prepared this team to become winners in the ultimate biggest game, and that's the game of life. I would like to thank all the sisters who were at Immaculata at that time. There was a group of six or seven of the sisters who would attend all of our home games, sit right behind the bench. Um, they would travel to some away games, Seeing them in the bleachers at Brookdale at that state championship game made us all feel very comfortable. And believe me, we all know that those extra prayers that they said in the final two minutes of the game was the real reason that we won that state championship. I'd also like to thank uh, Linda and Liz, the assistant coaches of our team. Um, they were a huge part of our championship. Uh, Linda was my assistant for all the six years that I coached at Immaculata. She probably still has a number of battle scars uh, from my antics on the sideline, but uh, I really appreciate everything they did for the team that year. But most of all, I want to thank these 15 women, the 1987 NJSIA State Championship Basketball Team. I'm very proud of the way that they played on the court and everything we accomplished but I'm more proud of what they accomplished off the court. They represented their team, their school, their families, and themselves in such a positive manner. And 32 years later, I'm even more proud of what they've become. Outstanding, outstanding young ladies. I know I wasn't the easiest coach to play for, but um, I can only say and hope that these women learned half as much from me as what I have learned from them. They taught me to believe in your faith, to understand the power of prayer. On behalf of the 1987 State Championship Basketball Team and the coaching staff, I'd once again like to thank everyone for coming tonight to honor our team. A lot of our past players uh, from other years are here and we really appreciate you being here. Uh, and I know I speak for the entire team that we will never forget tonight's experience. I'd also like to thank this gentleman uh, over here because he took, personally, he took a chance on a young 23-year-old to take over the girls' basketball program in 1981. Pierce, though, he fought for girls' sports. Uh, Cindy was saying back in the 70s, you know, pre-Title uh, IX, but Pierce fought for us, really gave us anything we needed, and was a real supporter of us, and uh, i really like to thank him for all that. I could talk all night about this team, but unfortunately, I think it's about time that uh, I sit down. A lot of jokes. If anyone wants to know how much weight I've lost since those pictures, come see me after the dinner. And I'll let you know how much weight I've lost since then, okay? I'm not sick. Don't worry, you know, but okay? And now I'd like to introduce our team captain, Kerry Joe Sullivan. Good evening. There's a lot of stuff up here, Pierce. <laughs> As your last speaker, I promise I won't be long because we have some Cinderella's to catch up with tonight. Uh, Tom talked a lot about the team. 
but I just want to thank the groups of people that made the 1987 state championship possible. First of all, thank you to all our parents and our families for driving all over New Jersey, being at every game, carting us to practices, and just being our support system, which we all know is always behind the scenes, but those are the people that really make things happen. A special shout out to my family and my brother Jeff Sullivan, who graduated two years ahead of me. Uh, kind of showed me the way in sports. Used to beat me up a lot too, but <laughs> that's what makes us tough, right? Older brothers. Um, I just want to acknowledge the girls that came before us, true athletes like Betty Clifford and Kathy Graham, and then the basketball players who really put Immaculata basketball, girls basketball, on the map. Lizzie Selinger, Diane Finnan, Mary Ellen McLaughlin, Eileen Selinger. Those were big names and they paved the way for our success. They were just as much a part of our state championship as we were. Then of course there was Sister Karen and her squad. <laughs> and yes, she did sit behind us, but that's kind of not the way I remember it. <laughs> One of our coaches who will remain nameless uh, tended to kick the bleachers when he got fired up. So maybe uttered an expletive or two. Um, so, you know, that first row of Sister Karen and her uh, sisters probably wasn't really the best place to sit, but it was, it was very appreciative. We were very appreciative of having them there, of course, at the state championship, as Tom mentioned. Um, you know, it's nice to have a support system when you look out and you see the people that have been there all along. It's important. Uh, also, Mr. Fraunheim just wanted to thank Mr. Fraunheim. He was an amazing athletic director, um, kept a couple of us out of trouble. <laughs> there were a few visits, not going to lie. <laughs> not me, of course. And uh, of course, thanks to Coach Morio, you know, Coach Pertel, Coach Amatucci for teaching us what it meant to be a team working hard and working together. It was a great run, but all successful teams start with great coaches. If there were a few less suicides, that'd have been cool though. <laughs> for those of us, for those of you that don't watch a lot of basketball, that's probably why I don't really know you. <laughs> but if you're watching the NCAA tournament this week, you're gonna see the a lot of the teams have the family warm-up shirts. And you know, I think that really describes what we were, a team, a small, tight-knit family. Uh, my friend's brother, actually, from California, created that slogan. And it's, it's obviously family means something to all of us, but it really means, forget about me, I love you. So if you see that and you didn't know that, that's what it is. Um, so I just want to thank my teammates for being my small little family and to Immaculata, which was our extended family. And of course, one of my teammates mentioned that if you don't say something about the softball team. So yeah, pretty much our basketball team was our softball team in cleats. <laughs> and uh, we went to the state championship. We lost in the finals. Somebody threw a wild pitch and we lost, so my bad. So, by rights, we could have all been up here together, but so softball ladies, love you too. Um, I recently read an article uh, that said the best employees to hire are athletes, and I firmly believe that's true. Athletes are dedicated, they're driven, they work together, they're resilient. And as you know, we work well under pressure and have faith in our team. But above all, the one team concept, I think, especially in girls' sports, that molds your life for success is being selfless. And that makes us successful career women, great sisters, awesome daughters, and coaches of our own families. Of course, you know mom, what mom means. That's like head coach. 
dads, you know, we very much appreciate your support too. <laughs> and most importantly, as moms, we've shown our sons and daughters what a privilege, privilege it is to be a student athlete. We continue to teach them to work hard, have faith and determination. And now we complete the circle of life, sitting in the stands and cheering for our favorite athletes. So if, finally, I just wanna give a big thanks to the Hall of Fame committee. Um, I know they work very hard and obviously it's a great honor for our team. And congratulations to my coaches and all of my teammates. I love you all, God bless.